Hi, everyone. Welcome back to a Liftoff PM product management interview lesson. My name is Kevin Wei, and on today's show, we have Mark with us, and he's going to share the top 10 tips to earn a strong higher rating for your product management interviews. So, Mark, before we jump right in, do you want to give a quick intro and say a few words? Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Rose. I've been a product manager for Eons and Eons, working at Google and Meta and many other companies. Um, I'm also a product management coach. You can find me at productmarkby.com dot com, productbymark.com. And uh, one of the most frequent questions I get is, Mark, how can I change my answer, which I think is probably good for a hire? How can I make that a strong hire? All right, back to you, Kevin. Great. Thanks, Mark. So right before we dive into that, I just want to say that on this channel, Liftoff PM, this is your go-to destination for your PM interviewing tips and career strategies. I recently landed offers from Fang and top startups, and I spent the last three years helping PMs land offers as an interview coach. So on this channel, we're going to have free lessons. And if you want access to our paid course, our complete paid course, just click the link in the description or the link in the comments, um, and you'll be able to unlock it. We know there's a lot of courses out there, but you can think of our course on Liftoff PM as an accelerated program where we share everything we've learned from our years of coaching clients like yourself to ace your PM interviews. And regardless, we'll be continuing to make free content just like this one. So easy way to support is just to like the video, subscribe, and let us know in the comments any other topics you want to see. All right, let's get into it. Top 10 tips to earn that strong hire rating. Back to you, Mark. All right, great. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, so here they are, top 10 tips. Um, start with number one. Uh, number one, of course, is frameworks. Um, there are lots of different types of questions and there are lots of different types of frameworks. Um, if you come in with a hire, what that means is your frameworks are going to be good, right? They're going to be solid. They're going to be, uh, they're going to be well laid out, but what's the difference between a good framework and a really strong hire framework? And the difference is the strong hire framework is super crisp, right? You literally know it like the back of your hand. It just comes off naturally, organically. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to type about it. It comes out in nice, clean bullets, which is easy to understand. And from a product manager interviewer perspective, I'm thinking like, great, this candidate is a pro. Let's get started. Number two, and this is a big picture item. This is content, right? The framework is nothing without stuffing it with amazing content. And just to get the hire, right, the content of all these interviews have to be strong. They have to be coherent. They have to be well thought out, right? That gets you to the hire zone. The question is, what gets you to the strong hire zone? That's tough, actually. So in product sense, you actually have to have your product manager interviewer in a position saying, you know what? I want that product. That's a great product. I like that. I actually wish our company would build something like that. That's pretty cool. Or with analytics, you want them saying like, you know, that's a fresh take. Um, that's a really good derived metric you came up with. And that's pretty interesting. Or if it's on execution or strategy, you want people saying like, wow, that uh, I never really thought about it that way. Right. So it's really thinking at a higher level, really kind of pushing yourself and pushing your product manager interviewers with some really fresh creative content. I know it's hard, but that's what it takes to get to a strong hire. And uh, number three, product management theater. So what I think is a good hire is if you've got a good, strong verbal narrative, right? You're getting questions, you're answering, they're, they're bulleted, they're strong, they're coherent, you know, kind of like the framework. Um, but with a strong hire, the theater is different, right? Your product manager interviewer is sitting there. Um, they're literally being entertained by your presentation skills. They're actually enjoying it, right? And one way to help them enjoy it is type it out 100%. Absolutely do a shared experience. You can, do, you can type it on a Google Doc. You can do it on a whiteboard behind you. You can do it through um, Miro. Um, but if you're presenting the experience to your product manager interviewer and it's, and it's coming out like entertainment, um, that is how you get a strong hiring number theater. Okay. Number four, product vision and strategy. So a hire, right? You will have strong product vision and strategy, right? But a strong hire is going to bring something that's really thoughtful, right? Something that is clear, something that is compelling. Again, something that the person is thinking about either for, you know, the company they're usually asking about, right? Which is usually their own company, or maybe it's another product, but they're like, wow, 
um, I would actually want to buy that product. That's a really interesting product vision. So if you can come up with a product that people actually want to buy on the fly, that's a strong hire. Um, next is a user-centric mindset. So a hire is obviously someone who's user-focused, someone who's going to come up with pain points, someone who's going to come up with a list and, and have a good user-centric mindset. A strong hire, right? I want you to think of product management as acting, right? And I want you to be the actor in the persona that you're trying to represent in your pain points, right? I want you to win the golden globe for product management and pain points so that your product management interviewer feels the pain and they're like, wow, this person has really deep customer empathy. Um, and that's what it takes uh, to make a strong hire. Number six, problem solving skills. So problem solving skills are how you show trade-offs and things like that. And you'll have a number of questions, whether it's an analytics question or whether it's a, or whether it's a um, trade-off question or a prioritization question. Um, your, your skills here are about able to put together what I call quick and simple rubrics, right? Actually, higher, people who do uh, higher are people that can prioritize and prioritize reasonably well. But people who are strong hires are people that can make it really simple, crisp, and compelling, right? And if you can do that and show very simple trade-offs, actually, the, in a way, the simpler you can make it and the more clear and compelling you can make it um, is your way to get to a strong hire. And Mark, just to jump in here real quick on prioritization, I think also what might make someone a strong hire is if you're able to demonstrate that you understand how to strategically get the important projects you want, even if you don't have the resources across the line. So not only like understanding all the levers, not only does that mean uh, prioritizing, but also does it mean you have to go to leadership and ask for more headcounts, things like that. Being able to call out these things and knowing how to work with leadership on these things is also what separates not only a strong hire from a hire, but also someone who is more senior and more tenured versus someone who might be seen as more of a lower level PM. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Number seven, leadership and influence. Um, leadership um, is something what a good hire is you can give good clear examples of how you showed leadership you showed backbone you showed initiative right and and these things are evident and it's clear people would say yes he's a good product leader a great product leader is actually playing a very different game and i like to use chess as an analogy because chess is a great game um in the game of chess right the simple game of chess you're playing with a chessboard, and as a product manager, you might be a, a king or a queen or a rook or a bishop or whatever position you choose, right? And you're helping the rest of the pieces move along the chessboard, and you're basically playing a game of chess, and you're doing a good job. And that's what a hiring, that's what a hire is. A person who can play chess well. A strong hire is a person that's not only playing with one chessboard, but they're playing with multiple chessboards at the same time. They're basically playing multiple player chess on multiple games, trying to increase the odds of games being won in multiple chess boards. Now, that's a very abstract way to think about it. But another way to think about it is, how are you leading, inspiring people on teams that don't work for you? How are you leading, inspiring people on teams that are adjacent to you, that look to you and say, wow, this person is doing a really great job in analytics or vision, or I want to work on that. If you can show evidence of that, that makes a strong hire. Number eight, um, execution ability. You know, uh, one of the things I know uh, lots of the companies try and weed out is what I call the ivory tower product manager. I'm sorry, I hate to pick on companies like Accenture, but you know the type of people that come in that have done the well, I've done the consulting route, and they can tell you exactly what to do, but they can't tell you how to do it at all. They can't actually do it at all. Um, that's exactly the person that uh, the, the FANG companies don't want to hire. So a good hire is someone who has a you know strong evidence of execution, right? They come in like, look, I'm going to build product one, two, and three. And they have a strong evidence of building product one, two, and three on time uh, with great features that have compelling value propositions that you know meets all the, that meets all the things. But I think what makes a really compelling or like a really strong hire is someone who has really complex projects, right? So it's one thing to deliver a product, right? But you have to really deliver complex projects with lots of teams, lots of integrations, lots of complexity. So the more sophistication you have in the product complexity, complexity and that's, by the way, 
That's not talking about what the product looks like, right? A beautiful product is like the simplest thing in the world. Google search, great example, right? Text box, go button, search button, I should say, right? Very simple consumer uh, implementation, um, but, the, but the product behind it is fantastically complex, right? So this also depends a little bit on your product portfolio, but um, exceptional um, people who are exceptional and people who are strong hires are able to demonstrate how the very simple products they made are actually very, very complex underneath and uh, took mountains to move them to kind of bring them to market. So if you can tell that story, um, you can be a strong hire. And I'd also jump in here and say, think about what are the strengths of the company or the products around the specific team that you're building this product for? Are there any flywheels that you can tap into? Does this product become stronger because it's used in conjunction with other products within the same portfolio? Being able to call out all of these things also shows how you have a strategic mind and helps you get that strong higher rating. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Number nine, cultural fit. Um, I love cultural fit because actually I think it's somewhat misunderstood. Um, so on a higher basis, you're going to do your homework, right? You're going to find out what the key values of the company are that you're looking for. You're going to look up their leadership principles. You're going to look up their core values. You're going to look up their letters to shareholders, all these things. So you're going to, you're going to understand their culture at a high level. And then what you're going to try and do is map your experience to that, um, to that set of uh, um, criteria, I guess you could say, and, and align those and tell that story. And if you're able to do that effectively, congratulations, you've met the higher bar. And that's good, right? Don't get me wrong. That's where you want to be. But the question I always get is like, Mark, great. How can I get to strong hire? And this is where the answers are a little bit different. And um, they'll, they're different for everybody. But what I tell people, and these are the most compelling answers I've ever heard, are when people dig into stories from their childhood or their early youth, um, times when they've had to face adversity or times when they've had to face real challenges that almost anyone can share that empathy with. So what's important about those stories? That stories makes those, uh, they make them very um, authentic and they make them very compelling, right? And you can't take that away from someone. And when you have stories that are deeply compelling and deeply authentic, uh, that's going to move you from the higher zone to the strong higher zone, because everyone's going to want to work with you because of these this amazing background that you bring. And even if it's a very simple and humble one from your childhood, uh, people will really, really resonate with that. All right, and we have number 10. Um, this one is, um, I have to admit, it's a little bit of controversial, but I'm gonna go ahead and go there. Um, number 10 is technical expertise. <laughs> um, yes. So a good hire in product management um, obviously is technically capable, is able to work with engineers and able to work with designers and, and knows what they're doing. Um, a strong hire is someone who's actually been there, built it, done that, um, and they have a deep understanding of every part of the stack. Um, it's like the carpenter who assembles the desk and is obsessed about the, the back part of the desk, even though no one can see it. So a big part of product management, and I think really great product management, is having deep technical expertise. Um, if you don't have that, I encourage you to find it, because even after you finish college, I don't have a, for example, I don't have a degree in, in uh, computer science or actually anything technical. But I've, I've taught myself over the years and years and years and years how to be technical and how to dive into those details. And anyone can learn them. Um, uh, I like the, uh, if you remember the movie uh, Ratatouille, anyone can cook. I have a corollary, which is anyone can code. Um, so anyone can learn this. Anyone can learn to be deeply technical, but it, it's kind of like the uh, the expression, um, uh, knowledge is abundant, uh, but it's the, it's the desire to learn, which is scarce. Uh, so if you want to be a strong hire in technical expertise, um, learn some technical chops and uh, you too will be a, a strong higher category in the field that you want to go in. That's a good one. And I think it depends also based on the team. There's some teams that might be looking for more technical people and there's some teams that might be looking for more strategic PMs. But if you are someone who's looking for resources to become more technical, we do have a video on our Liftoff PM channel on how technical PMs should be. You can go and read engineering blogs and you can try and put together prototypes and you should, you can try to understand like 
for designing systems, when are certain decisions, one-way door decisions versus two-way doors decisions. Um, being able to call out different kind of trade-offs like this is what makes a PM technical. You don't necessarily need to know how to code, but those are all the different ways that PMs can become more technical. And we do have a video on that. Um, and I would say that these are all great tips that Mark showed. It's very dependent on the role that you're applying to, but generally, if you follow these tips, you will be able to get that strong higher rating versus just a strong, uh, just a higher rating. So uh, before we close out the video, thanks for all these insights, Mark. Do you have any last thoughts that you wanted to share with the audience? No, not at all. Like I said, it's a, such a common question, Mark. How do I move from higher to strong higher? I hope these tips have been helpful. I know you're prepping for your interviews. Uh, a big part of this, of course, is doing mock interviews and getting prepped and doing your homework. So um, put your time in, get your mock interviews. Um, we're here to help. Um, reach out and uh, we'd love to help you get uh, where you want to go. Great. Thanks, Mark. And for the viewers at home, good luck with your upcoming interviews.